then in today's video, I want to share with you lenses I wish I never bought and why. So the first one is the 35mm 1.4 Mark II Canon. I'm just joking, I actually really do love this lens. I just wanted to say, if you haven't watched my review video on this lens, please go and check it out. I'll leave that in the description below. And I also have a fashion photo shoot coming out where I use both the Mark I and Mark II and compare the differences between both lenses. So the first lens is the Sigma 24mm 1.4. As you guys all know, the 35mm is my favorite focal length that I use the majority of the time while I'm taking photos. I use a 35mm for portrait photos, landscape photos, wide angle photos, architecture photos, like I use it for pretty much everything. Because I love the 35mm so much, I wanted to get another lens that was also wide angle, so I ended up getting the 24mm lens. So there's a couple of issues with this lens that makes me kind of wish I never bought it. The first one is that it's not very versatile. So as you know, I love doing portrait photography and fashion photography. However, the 24mm is just that little bit too wide that I can't really use it for that type of work. When I take a close up portrait of someone, it can distort their face quite a lot and make it a bit of an unflattering photo. Compared to the 35 which does distort a little bit, but not so much that it's as noticeable as the 24 the 24 can take some really beautiful portrait photos. I took a few photos of Christina against this red flower bush, which I really, really love the look of the photos. However, I feel like I could have achieved the same look with the 35mm if I had just taken a step back. So it kind of feels like I don't really need the 24mm for my portrait photography. Another reason I got the 24mm lens is for wedding photography. So if you guys have watched my wedding photography video, you would know that I shoot with two cameras on me at all times with two different focal lengths on each camera. So while I'm taking photos of the bride and groom getting ready in the morning, I normally like to have my 35mm and my 50mm lens on my cameras. However, sometimes the hotel rooms or the cottages or houses where they're getting ready are a little bit of a tight squeeze and I find that I use the 35mm 99% of the time and I can only get a really clear shot with the 50mm every now and then just because there's like too many people in the room and I don't have enough distance to be able to get a nice shot with the 50 so I thought if I got the 24mm, I could use it in those instances to be able to replace the 50 with the 24 and have a 24 to 35mm combination so I can get wide angle shots of where the bride and groom are getting ready. The issue with this is that I feel like those photos look too similar to each other, the 24 and the 35mm focal length. So regardless of having the two different lenses on my camera and having a wider angle lens, I still ended up using the 35mm 90% of the time during the getting ready photos. Another reason I wanted the 24mm for weddings was to get specific shots throughout the day that I couldn't get with any of my other lenses. For example, I thought it would be nice to be able to have like maybe one or two wide shots of the ceremony area if it's extremely beautiful and there's been lots of decorating and things like that or if the bride and groom are having their ceremony under a really big tree. I thought having the 24mm would be the perfect way to be able to capture that scene in full for the couple. I also thought it would be nice to have so I can get kind of landscape photos during the bridal portraits with the bride and groom kind of small in the distance of the photo as well. The problem with this is that all these things can still be achieved with the 35mm lens if I just take a few extra steps back. So a lot of the time it kind of feels like it's more effort than it's worth to pack the 24mm lens in my camera bag and have it on me all day during those 10 hour wedding days that I'm shooting only to use it for a couple of shots here and there throughout the day. So on the days that I do take my 24 and I do use it, I really do love the photos that it produces. It's got really great image quality, the color edition's beautiful and the bokeh is really nice as well. The one issue that I have with the Sigma 24mm is that it tends to miss focus a little bit while I'm shooting. So because I don't use the 24mm too often, it's not too much of an issue for me. If I have the 24mm and I'm getting a specific shot, I just make sure to take a few extra photos than normal just to make sure that one of them's in focus. 
So I actually got a focus calibration chart to try and fix up those focusing issues on the 24mm. While it has fixed up a little bit of the back focus issues, the 24mm does still miss focus a little bit. Not as much as before, but it still does, so it doesn't feel like a super reliable lens. So the 24mm 1.4 is a lens I wish I never bought because I can still do everything that I could do on the 24 with my favorite 35mm focal length. Now, I don't know if this is ironic, but one of the other lenses I wish I never bought is also a 24mm focal length, but it is the Samyang 24mm tilt shift lens. Just in case you don't know, Samyang is also known as Rokinon. So optically, the Samyang is just as nice quality as the Canon tilt shift lens, however this lens comes with a much nicer price tag. The tilt shift really does take beautiful, high quality images. I love what it does and how it affects the photo. However, it's really just not worth it for me to carry this around all day with me just to get one or two photos. So very similar situation with the 24 mm lens. So I never ended up including example images of what the tilt shift looks like in my last video where I talked about it. So here are some examples of what the tilt shift can do. I shot these photos at weddings and as you can see, I really only get one photo with the tilt shift lens during the bridal portraits of each wedding that I do. So a couple of other reasons of why I wish I never bought it is because it's something that hardly ever gets used, so I kind of feel like it was a bit of a waste. I also feel like the tilt shift effect has kind of been outdated. It was like all the rage a few years ago and I feel like no one really does that now and no one really expects that anymore. So it's kind of gone out of style. And one last thing with the tilt shift lens is that it takes a lot of fidgeting around with all the buttons and the wheels and stuff that it has to be able to get the photo in position of what you want. So I'm going to try and take a landscape photo of this tree right here just to show you guys what the tilt shift looks like and also why I don't really like using it at weddings. It just takes me a really long time to get the settings really right. Um, so there it is normally and then we just pull it up and you can see the top and the bottom of the shot is starting to blur as I move my focus ring around. I need to take a lot of photos with the tilt shift because it is a manual focusing lens um, just to make sure that I have a shot that's tack sharp. So it is a little bit difficult to get a really nice genuine moment with whoever I'm taking a photo of whether it be a couple at a wedding or a portrait and making sure that at the same time, that moment when it happens is sharp and in focus. So something that I just wanted to mention is that the tilt shift lens is actually supposed to be used for architecture photography and you're supposed to use all these dials and things like that to be able to correct any image distortion in a photo so you can get really straight compositions of buildings. However, I like to use it in a different way and be able to take really creative photos of a couple or my subject by blurring the top and bottom of the photo. And the issue with that is that during the bridal portraits on a wedding day, you do have a really limited amount of time with the couple to be able to get all the photos of them and the bridal party that you need. So Using the tilt shift lens, there's a lot of buttons and a lot of dials that you need to adjust to be able to get the right look in your photo. And sometimes we just don't really have the time to be able to mess around with all that. Another thing is because there is a really shallow area that's in focus of the photo, I need to shoot in live view mode with Canon. And I find that Canon's live view is pretty slow when you're taking photos, so it's really hard to capture that perfect genuine moment while the photo is in focus with the blur in the right spot and the couple's having a moment. So perhaps if I had a mirrorless Sony camera instead, which shoots in live view mode super fast, maybe then I would start using the tilt shift a little more often. But even then, it's still in the same boat as the 24 of, is it really worth it to bring an extra big heavy lens that you have to carry around with you all day just to get a couple of photos. In saying that, they are both great lenses that take beautiful photos. 
Um, they're just not right for me or my workflow and what I do and what is expected of me from my clients. Which is why I kind of wish I never bought them as they don't get the amount of use that I feel like they should be getting. Please let me know in the comments if you guys have any lenses that you wish you never bought or any lenses that you hardly use anymore as I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye!